the league is back. Massive crowds all around the country for the return of the Allianz Football League. The Hurling League gets underway at the uh, next weekend. Um, Anthony Moyes is with us to look back on you know, some fairly interesting storylines. We may as well start. We heard Jack O'Connor a little bit upset about the fact that maybe one of the points that Donegal scored was actually wide. But um, I don't know. I mean, I think uh, the real story coming out of that game is that Donegal have an entirely new management team and a bunch of kids and they were bloody good. Yeah, they were, uh, Ger. Uh, good to be back. Good to be back. The league is back. Good to be back on uh, bright and early. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 it's it's amazing. It's a new look, Donny Gall. It's a new look, Paddy Carr. He was uh, he was sporting a fairly groovy looking hairdo yesterday. Um, he Paddy's getting bit by the wild Atlantic way, it seems. Um, but yeah, he settled in nicely um, and. They've unearthed a couple of good lads. The new lad, Caelan McColgan, I thought was fantastic. He kicked a couple of scores, raided up and down the half back line. Um, you know, in the modern era, as we know, if a team sits in, you need it, you need half backs and indeed cornerbacks, but certainly half backs who were able to come up and kick scores from range. Uh, and he was able to do that. He was able to add pace at vital times. Um, but you know, it was a game probably. That Donegal would have said, look, we're going to try and catch Kerry, uh, you know, here, you know, they have to come all the way up to us. They have a lot of players missing. They have a lot of players who are in club duty who'll be, who'll be taking a bit of a break. Um, and they would have earmarked this to probably, I'm sure, get two scores. Now, it didn't look likely at all uh, during it, especially with the, with the gift of the goal they gave them. Um, but I thought they were the better team, to be honest with you. And, you know, it, for young lads to get that win, you actually heard McColgan with an interview after it's, you know, it was a kind of a rallying call, a bit, bit early maybe, but maybe he's shown his his, his vibrancy and his, his, his youth. But he was kind of saying, you know, it was vital that we set down a marker here. Um, and it probably was, you know, for Paddy Carr and the new look management team that they come out and that they give the supporters something to shout about and a bit of, a bit of, uh, you know, kind of, uh, uh, let's say, hope after the Michael Murphy era. Bit of, bit of bite out of um, Paddy McBrady in, in an interview as well afterwards, Anthony. Like, I think he was asked, or someone, the reporter said to him, oh, a bit of a shock result. And he said, well, to who? Not to us. Um, and, and look he came up clutch as he always does as you say that this Donegal team I was watching them in the McKenna Cup and I, I was concerned a bit for Donegal they didn't look great but then of course that mix of youth and experience is what they have and I think that was McBrady's first point of the day so he came up when the moment needed him yeah it's funny you know I watched him last year I thought he was a little bit out of condition last year he was probably struggling with injury um, I know he has been struggling with injury probably for the last year and a half, two years. and But he's looking as conditioned as I've seen him now in the last two or three seasons. So he's obviously putting the work in. I thought he was actually well shackled during the game. They found it difficult, Donegal. It's amazing. The way they, they were able to use Murphy, obviously, over the last number of years, you know, they'd pull him out to midfield when required and then they'd have him as the focal point in at full forward. And there was always that out ball especially when teams didn't crowd in in front of them. Um, they didn't really have that yesterday. If you look, a lot of stuff went through the hands, a lot of stuff went through the lines. There wasn't really the quick ball in, and they found it difficult to hit McBurty. McBurty has always been a corner forward, so even when he has to go into full forward, there's different runs required. So if you actually watch, a lot of balls that went into him went into him kind of into the corner, and he had to go out and get them and they kind of recycle them around. Um, now, he doesn't mind doing that because when he comes around on that loop, he'll recycle it and then he'll look for the return. And, of course, that worked like a treat. We've seen him kick those scores for umpteen years uh, and talk about a time to come up with it, like an unbelievable strike in you know pretty soggy conditions at 70 something minutes on the clock legs are tired you've after putting in a shift uh, and he comes and he sticks that over the bar so fantastic leadership from him um, as captain um, and a great way to win the game yeah and it's not really a disaster for Kerry if they have a slight grudge heading back down the road some, a grievance to nurse over the rest of the week they've got Monaghan in town uh, in Kerry next week and like for all Jack's saying, oh, the players that we have are the ones that matter at the moment. That's not the case. Like, um, you know, whatever no. the league, whatever happens in the league for Kerry is completely irrelevant. If they uncover, if a Cumber gets a few more games and bedded into the team and it's somebody who might be important for them in the championship, like, Kerry, we know, are a known known at this point. And uh, it's up to everybody else to try and, and shoot them down. Yeah, and where it's important, Jer, for them is the likes of Paul Murphy yesterday. You know, it, it, this is an important league for the likes of him who has been on the team 
has been very important to the team. Then found himself kind of on the periphery last year. Spillane as well, a guy who's kind of been in and out. Um, Jack Barry, an important league maybe that he just solidifies midfield, especially with Moran retiring. There's, there's a couple of subplots, I think, with Kerry and a couple of sub stories going on with them. Um, but they, like, I mean, do they have to one earth forwards? No, <laughs> is the answer. You know, they're not, they're not in that camp. Um, do they have to one earth a couple of backs? They're pretty tidy still. Like, I mean, we know, you know, Morley does his job. Um, they have, you know, great full back line. They still have the power and pace of the half forward line or half back line with White, etc. And um, so, you know, they're not they're not in a, any kind of a, even way you'd say, Jesus, they have to get one or two players. It would be nice for them, I would say, to see can they bring Brosnan along? Can they bring one or two forwards? So if anything ever happened to Clifford or indeed Pawdy Clifford um, or indeed Ganey that they, you know, that they can push. So, for example, Spillane is an important league for him to kind of really start to cement a place. And kind of nearly have it in a situation that when Clifford comes back, Clifford's really battling with him to try and you know wrestle back a corner forward or a full forward spot. So they need these lads not to kind of sit back. It, it's it's a it's a strange one. The mentality can't be ah when we get these lads back we'll be all right. It can't it can't be that way. They, and 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 you're right. This will now give the lads a good kick up the rear end this week. You can hear you can already know what they're saying this week for for for, for training. You know that lads that's one loss. If we lose another one, all of a sudden we're zero out of four, and we're staring down the barrel of a gun coming into the in, 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 down to Division Two. So you can imagine they'll be up in the ante this week. The rhetoric around, you know, to forget the rest of the lads. You set your stamp on this team. You know, you hold on to the jersey. All that stuff will come in, um, and it is it is important that they do that because you know when you look at the successful Dublin teams of of the, of, of obviously the, the domination that they had. They, they treated that league very, very importantly, you know, and they said they didn't just kind of say, ah, oh, when we get this lad back and that lad back, we'll be all right for the championship. They went out and they generally got, you know, to the latter stages of those leagues. And 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 the fellas who came through, who may have been on the panel for a year or two, cemented their position going into the championship. That's the point I think you made, Jar, uncovering new players. Dara Roach at full forward for Kerry yesterday. I have to say I was fairly unfamiliar with him before yesterday. Kicked three lovely points. Um, kicked a winning point I think a couple of weeks ago in the McGrath Cup against Clare in the last minute I made headlines last summer he scored 3-9 in a club game for Denflesk, uh, Denflesk against Brosna like, this is a guy kind of coming in under the radar Anthony but that's the exact type of player that Kerry need to uncover especially when they have so many injuries Yeah you know and, 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 and I think Shane gives them something different as well in the sense of he, he's not he, he's not your he's, he's, a, he's a strong full forward type mm. you know well able to take hits but he can shift as well like he got a ball there yesterday if you remember for one of his scores coming across on his left mm. he had a bit to do he had three Donegal men around him and he managed to get away from them with speed and, and they were they were right on him um, and he held up under the tackles most lads would have probably maybe gone down there and he could have won a free but he held strong and he stuck, stuck the ball over the bar um, I do think he gives them that you know look again They'll possibly need a foil uh, slightly for Clifford um, because every team, uh, you know, in, in the rest of the country will think, OK, how do we stop him? How do we put players around him? So if all of a sudden you can say, well, actually, we can stick him out the corner forward or we can put him out at 11 mm. um, and we can we can, you know, we can put him as a, as a 15 and just bring him out around the half forward line. That completely messes your plan up. Now, if they have a full forward such as him who's able to win ball and win dirty ball. Um, he strikes me as that type of a player, but who can also kick scores. That's going to be a big bonus for them. Uh, we, we, we've buried the lead again. Uh, Jim mm. McGuinness is back in the backroom team of uh, the down footballers, apparently, according to a Stevie Poulter tweet. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. He came in. I, suppose, I think allegedly he did a training session or two last week. Um, yeah, now they're saying that he's not part of it, but he obviously is part of it. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with you know man or you know these guys coming in and just doing one training session or two training sessions a month or something like this. I just think it actually can unsettle things more than anything. Maybe not this time of the year, but certainly as it gets closer to to the to the to the to the, to the you know the kind of championship end of things. Um, yeah, it's a strange one, uh, you know, but I think, you know, it's a young management team up there um, and they're obviously just trying to kind of unearth a couple of things and bring in a bit of experience where they can. So, yeah, you know, there's, I don't think there's a whole pile wrong with it. Yeah, and who do Down have in the first game in, in, in Ulster Championship? Is it Donegal? I think it is Donegal. I mean, the narratives, the, the stories write themselves, Anthony. 
Yeah, well, you know, I was amazed. I didn't see, I wasn't keeping an eye on the golf. And, you know, you, you talk about just, you know, the, the, the stars align sometimes, you know, and that's that's just happens. And, and you know, does McGuinness go in there and all of a sudden plot? Um, yeah, you can see it happening. And uh, I, it certainly had a nice bit of spice to that championship game. I had heard that McGuinness could have been part of the backroom team if Roy Cabin had ended up getting the gig and obviously Rory was very close to getting it and mm. then that didn't happen and all of a sudden uh, Carr ends up getting it uh, after a, a protracted process so look mm. you know it's um, as you say sometimes the stars align uh, The so we talked um, Donegal Kerry Mayo and Galway um, again look it's very early in the season but Mayo showed character to come back uh, they also showed that they have some forwards who are willing to um take risks and sometimes uh, no risk it no biscuit and sometimes you uh, score the goal of the season in the opening uh, round of league fixtures so I think both teams will be relatively happy with a tough hard fought game and you end up with a draw Absolutely you know 14 and a half or 13 and a half thousand or whatever it was in McHale Park great atmosphere you know Saturday night game who cares about the conditions when you have that kind of vociferous atmosphere, loads of people, local rivals, you know, all that usual stuff. Um, and just great. You could you could feel the excitement. You could feel the tension. You could feel, you know, the 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 the, the intensity from the TV. It was bouncing out at you. Um, Galway be happy. I think Mayo will be happy enough as well. I don't see any massive change to the Mayo setup. I don't see any massive kind of alteration. Uh, yes, new individuals, but then again, you know, he finishes with an awful lot of the same old faces, I suppose. Um, did anyone really jump out at me that would say, wow, that guy is going to be a a, a big player for them come the championship? Maybe a bit early to say, oh, Donahue was excellent. Um, I thought he's a guy who, you know, sometimes I look at him, I've probably been a little bit critical of him a couple of times last year, but then... You know, there's been a few times where he has really led the line. Uh, I can't remember what game it was last year. It could have been a Tyrone game where he led the line and he literally got beaten up for about 70 minutes, but he kept coming back and kept coming back for it. Um, and I thought yesterday, if you watch it, obviously he misses one not too dissimilar to the one he gets literally about two or three minutes beforehand. He, he just It just doesn't come in for him enough on, on the, on the right-hand post. And you're kind of thinking when he gets the opportunity, you're thinking, is he going to slip it? You know, will he back himself again? And you know, that's what great forwards do. They do. They they they, they back themselves every time, and he and he absolutely nails it. Um, but he had played well during the game, um, and you know, he led the line for them, and that's what they need because I think they're a little bit rudderless in 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 that kind of you know. O'Connor is obviously gone. They have Carr now. They're trying to try him, obviously in full forward, strong, physical, fast. Um, obviously, you can kick a kick can kick a score, um, but they, they you know they're they're probably just trying to find their way of are we a big man full forward line team? Um, I'm, I'm putting the odd big ball in and long ball. Or are we still trying to work it through the hands like we used to? I didn't see any of that real kind of massive pace and massive kind of you know abandonment that used to go on with with with, with Keegan and say Oshie and Mullen where they would just go and go past players and look to get on the end of things. I think there was a little bit more shackles on the defence, but uh, but that's fine. Listen, they're a team I suppose in transition and McStay and McHale and 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 and, and Rochford have to find their way with them, but. You know, again, there's there's loads of passion still down there uh, and loads of ability and uh, both teams will be happy, I think, with the result. When you talk about passion, I don't think any county loves their football as much as Roscommon fans. We get some amount of hate in the comments when we don't give Roscommon their due credit. Uh, <laughs> D- Davy Burke was in the in the studio with us a few months ago. I was very impressed by him. Like He he oozes enthusiasm. That's one thing I'll say about Davy Burke. And, and they had that five-point lead at halftime yesterday against Tyrone. Tyrone whipped it around and ended up leading it th- by three points at some stage in the second half. They've been a yo-yo team, Anthony, in the Division 1 and back down to two and back up. So a bit of stability, I guess, is what they need under Davy Burke. And they were impressive yesterday. Yeah, he'll, br- he'll bring that. Uh, I think he will bring what you just said there, enthusiasm. Um, I think he will bring a, a purpose to them. Um, he'll bring order. He'll bring, a, you know, an awful lot of... Um, I think and he, he's also quite an innov- innovative manager. Um, so... You know, he'll change things around a bit without having to rip up the script. We all know that Roscommon have good forwards, okay? So they have guys who can take points. The problem has been what they what they ship on the far end, um, and they need to tighten that up. 
Uh, their midfield has been, it's young um, and it, it's getting there, but it needs to probably be a bit more kind of defensive thinking rather than forward thinking. Um, it's it's interesting. You see, again, going back to the situation I was just mentioning about the halfbacks kicking points, Daly coming up and kicking three, mm. uh, with, I think two or three, um, absolute great sc- scores from, from, from halfback. Um, they need that as well. They need fellas to be able to chip in, but that, that's a great result for them. And that, that'll give them massive, massive, massive confidence confidence going in like I mean the, the first day out you know I was kind of with a wry smile I was reading all the comments I was thinking is this just media hype uh, excuse the excuse the the dig lads not at you necessarily but I was saying to myself you know everyone was saying oh this is a big match it's a big game for me it's a big game for Claire it's a big game for it was a big game for everyone and you're kind of saying well it's the first game in the league is it really a big game but it is because it's no longer you know the league is no longer like when you come back a good half a stone overweight and you kind of, you know, kind of winter well and then you kind of ease yourself back into it and around, you know, game six of the league, you're saying, right, now I'm actually kind of back at the pitch of it and I'm getting ready for championship. The league is literally day one, bang, go. Um, and it, there's no more messing around. It's 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 flat out. Yeah, well, it's been our best competition in Gaelic football, like bar the All-Ireland series from really the semi-finals on uh, for the last 15 years. You, you would definitely say, and now all of a sudden, because they managed to make a complete hornix of the fucking championship. Division two might be the greatest sports competition on earth over the next month. <laughs> like, it's like the uh, March Madness, because some teams are going to have their entire season blown up and end up in the Talgen Cup. And uh, some teams are going to slingshot themselves into a position where they could be all Ireland quarter finalists or semi finalists. Or even the, the winner of the entire championship might have been on view in Croker on Saturday. I mean, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm not writing Claire off just yet. <laughs> yes, exactly, yeah. But Division 2, I do say, Division 2 is now ruthless. It is literally, you know, so, so you know, the emphasis on the importance of the games is, especially for Division 2, is, is enormous. Um, and you're right, you have to get a good start. You, you really, you know, the... You can, you can paint narratives whatever way you want with Kerry, with Dublin. You know, ah, Dublin were only feeling their way into it. Even with Kildare, I'd say Kildare, Ger, I'd say, you know, I'd say Glenn Ryan and the team would have would have focused on this game and said, here is a game we, we want to get something out of. Um, you know, Dublin last couple of years have started slowly, relatively slowly in the league. Um, brought a lot of Lou fellas in and they probably should have said to themselves, look, here is an opportunity where we can go and take two points off Dublin in Crow Park um, and, and get ourselves propelled forward. And you could see the disappointment in Glen after the game. You know, you really could. It was palpable that, you know, you could see, you know, terrible start. Um, he was delighted, obviously, that, you know, it didn't kind of run away from them. Um but, you know, I, I noticed over the week, I, I, I don't think, and maybe this is a prediction that will come back to bite me, but the conditioning of teams, especially the biggest teams, and actually all of the teams, to be fair, but especially the top 10 or 12 teams, the conditioning, where that gap was a number of years ago between the top four or five, and then let's say that next five or six also runs. And I would include Mead in that, you know, Kildare in that, Roscommon maybe. That that has now massively reduced. I looked at a number of the Mead fellas who I would know obviously fairly well and the conditioning of them and the, and the strength and the, how they look. Uh, and I could even see it in the Kildare team. The conditioning of Kildare, if you always remember, of course you remember, Dublin would just blow you out of daylights in that last 15 minutes. Or they could, they could nearly stick it into six gear for 10 minutes, even in the league, and then drop it back and go again and drop it back. I'm I'm not really seeing that anymore. Teams are so well conditioned now that they're able to stick with the with the top teams. They may not win the games, but they're able to stick that bit bit more. Um, and it's not true a fault of conditioning or fitness or, or or strength or agility. It may be a fault of football that gets you in the end. But um, those, I think the gap has has tightened on those things. Yeah, for sure. Look, we're out of time, Anthony. Great to have you back. The league is back. Mm-hmm. We're all back. Uh, Mead winners. Monaghan losers, Kildare losers. Sherlock. Buzzing still though. There you go. It's back. All right.